Well, it's hard to do much these days without someone or some business asking you to engage in their social media. They ask, like me here or follow me there. It's part of social change. Many may long for the old days when deals were done face to face and a handshake really meant something. While that does still matter in the political realm, it's now impossible for politicians to ignore the influence of social media. With the constant change of social media, it's hard to really pin down numbers, but current estimates indicate Facebook has 800 million active users and Twitter has over 100 million. That conglomeration is great for reconnecting with friends. It's also a gathering politicians are paying attention to. Politics has changed dramatically because of uh, the social media and so forth over the last uh, uh, few decades. Associate ISU professor Danny Kim studies and teaches about digital media. He sees an upside of access to information, but a downside in balanced information. The digital technology, you know, not only empower people to get you know, their own you know, power, you know, the control of the news selection, but also you know, narrow down you know, people in you know, a political perspective. Kim also says one advantage politicians have in using social media is getting their message directly to the people. Many of the national politicians are using social media for that purpose. The Twitter account for the White House has 2.5 million followers. The president's campaign Facebook page has 11 million likes. Republican frontrunner Mitt Romney has 167,000 Twitter followers and 1.1 million Facebook likes. Herman Cain has 167,000 followers on Twitter and almost 380,000 Facebook likes. Locally, the numbers aren't as big, but they are growing. Governor Otter has 3,500 tweets and almost 2,000 Facebook likes. Congressman Mike Simpson has 489 Twitter followers and 770 people liking his Facebook page. Senator Jim Risch does not use Twitter, and his Facebook page is from his campaign, so it is not current. Senator Crapo doesn't use Twitter, but he has over 2,500 likes on Facebook. Idaho's two senators and Congressman Simpson all have active web pages. Senator Crapo and Congressman and Simpson have even won awards for their sites. They all use YouTube to get out messages and television appearances. With more and more people utilizing the web as their primary source of information, it's vital that their elected officials maintain websites that provide reliable resources for constituents to be engaged and informed. You have to use all of those different types of, uh, of uh, methods of getting a hold of your constituents and, and uh, getting input from your constituents. Uh, in order to, to be effectively communicating with them. While the best information coming from these politicians is still on their own sites, Simpson is using Twitter to direct people to some of his appearances, statements, or even announcing tele-town hall meetings. The governor uses his Twitter to talk about his public appearances. Superintendent Tom Luna uses his Twitter account to talk about appearances and policies. While local politicians are not using social media to its full effect yet, they all say to look for shifts in that direction. So when I was speaking with uh, the offices of the U.S. Senators, they also they anticipate a move in the direction of social media. Senator Crapo has hired a media director to work on all of these platforms. Senator Risch says he has instructed his staff to look into Facebook and other avenues so he can get feedback and explain legislation. Incidentally, KPVI News 6 has Facebook and Twitter accounts where we let you know about some fun events, also breaking news. All of our anchors and reporters also have a presence on Facebook, and many are on Twitter. And So to bring this all around about how we started, about everyone asking, Asking you to follow them or like them, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at Todd Blackington. All right.